from the letter to the Hebrews. We're opening up in the ninth chapter today, and we'll begin verses 11 to 14. We will hear, hear Paul talking about uh, the greater tent, and we'll explore the symbolism of that. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, he entered once and for all into the holy place. What is the greater tent? Well, first let us look at the original tent. Some might say this refers to the tent of meeting used by Israel in the wilderness. The tent of meeting was also called the tabernacle. And that's the building um, over my shoulder. Uh, I'll read whichever way we can. So we can get another look at that. And the details of its construction are given in the book of Exodus chapters 26 to 28. This was not a tent of meeting for the people. No, they did not have worship inside the tent. It wasn't big enough. And they did not use it for board meetings or potlucks. The tent of meeting is where Moses and Aaron went to have meetings with God. This tent was the greatest tent of all the tents in the wilderness. The people's tents were for sleep and shelter. They were made, merely made of wool. The tabernacle tent was made of linen woven from blue, purple, and crimson yarns. This tent stood out as a showpiece in the center of camp. Just like a temple of stone and marble, this tent cost the people a lot of money. To us, blue, purple, and crimson yarn does not mean much. In Bible times, blue, purple, and crimson dye launched a thousand ships. Purple dye was the builder of empires. Let us talk about purple dye. The purple in the tent of meeting was most likely Tyrian purple. The name comes from the port of Tyre in Phoenicia. Purple dye was the export that made Phoenicia famous. The Tyrian purple was made from snails. It was hard to process and came from one kind of sea snail, the murex or Bolinaris brandaris, as biology majors would call it. It took 10,000 snails to make one gram of dye to put a good racing stripe on a Roman toga. Purple was the color of kings. It was against the law for commoners to wear Tyrian purple. To have purple yarn in the fabric of the tabernacle means this tent was the greatest tent in the entire nation. But the purple dye is not the most important thing inside this tent. The tent also contained the Ark of the Covenant. In the middle of the Ark of the Covenant, was the Ten Commandments. This was still not the most important thing inside the tabernacle. The most important thing inside the tabernacle was the Spirit of God. The Spirit appeared as the column of fire. It would hover over the Ark of the Covenant and speak to Moses. In the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, it was a terrible, terrible mistake for the Nazis to stand over the Ark of the Covenant and remove the lid. They were not ready to meet the Spirit of God. They were not ready to meet the most important thing inside the tent of meeting. The Nazis behaved like total fools and heathen. They paid a price. Even though the tent of meeting was the most important tent inside of all Israel, Paul says there is a still greater tent, not made by human hands, not of this creation. The greater tent is heaven. The greater tent is the place Jesus goes to prepare a place for us. Getting our foot inside the door of that tent makes everything else worthwhile. Paul knew what he was talking about. As a Pharisee, Paul read Exodus 26 to 28. He knew how the tabernacle was supposed to be made and respected. Paul was a tent maker by trade. Paul's church job was teacher, Pharisee. His day job was tent maker. As Paul was making tents of homespun fabric and humble wool, 
He may have thought about the tabernacle and its blue, purple, and crimson threads. Paul may have worked with tents for 50 years and never once made a tent with even one purple racing stripe. Paul knew all about the Hebrew tent, but he also knew about the door of the new tent opened up by Jesus Christ. Whereas the old tent of meeting contained the Ten Commandments, the new tent contains Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ embodied the greatest commandment, love God, love your neighbor. Whereas it took many days to harvest the snails, extract their fluids, and boil out the essence to make one gram of purple dye, it took Jesus just three days in the tomb to cook up our forgiveness. It took him just three days to open the door to eternal life. It took him just three days to create an inexhaustible supply of God's never-ending grace. The formula for Tyrian purple has been lost to the ages. Scientists are still trying to recreate the recipe for that Tyrian purple. But the formula for eternal life has not been lost. The formula is still right here, still in our Bibles, still available for anyone who wants to look and see for themselves. Yes, the greater tent has been open for business for 2,000 years now. It does not cost $3,000 per gram. It costs Jesus his life on the cross. What does it cost us? It costs us a choice. The choice to believe that same cross is the key to the door of the greater tent. Can we afford that cost? Can we afford to use Jesus Christ as the key to eternal life? Amen.